Next on the programme, though, around 60 venomous false widow spiders have been found in a home in Swindon. The Murto family found the infestation in their kitchen and one member was bitten. Let's talk to the man who dealt with them. Intrepid Justin Holloway from ProKill joins us now. Hello, Justin. Good afternoon, Lee. It's a job that not, not many of us would fancy, to be honest, but um, tell us about a, a, a false widow spider, then. What does it look like? Well, it's got a very large, bulbous abdomen and relatively small head by comparison. They're not very big. Um, you could put them on the size of a uh, 50 pence piece, typically. Um, they're very dark in colour, although the um, particular um, display we're dealing with today, uh, over the last few weeks at the site, um, is quite dark brown rather than dark black. Um, but they, they do look like something that might do you some harm. They, they have the classical image um, of, a, of a nasty spider. In fact, um, the, um, the fact about one of these things, um, in this, the uh, Super, uh, Super Man, the Spider-Man movie, they actually anaesthetised some of these spiders and painted them in the uh, black and red colours and used them in the movie um, when Peter Parker was bitten. So it's actually this particular variety of spider they used for that very purpose. Because they look like big, horrible, nasty... What we'd think of as a big, horrible, nasty spider. Correct. Well, not so much big, but nasty and horrible, for sure. <laughs> yeah, OK. Um, and, and are they nasty and horrible? Or, or is, have they got a bad rap? Yeah, they've got a pretty bad rap. I mean, if you go and stick your hand into a bee's nest, you're probably going to get stung. But bees are not known for their aggression. To, well, certainly not in, in Europe. Maybe in America, perhaps, but certainly not in Europe. So they... That they primarily live off of uh, other spiders and small insects. They have no intention to be biting you, that's for sure. You don't represent a prey. Um, but if you do put your hands on top of one and it feels threatened, it may just bite. There's always that possibility. And if they do bite, is, is that dangerous? Um, well, I think the reactions you can get anywhere from minimal through to, um, in some cases, life-threatening. But you've got to remember that the life-threatening end of the scale, it's highly, highly um, unusual. Um, most people will get a small swelling akin to maybe a wasp or bee sting. Um, at the other end of the spectrum, anybody who suffers from allergic reactions to stings from uh, insects can also have things like anaphylactic shock occur. Uh, in the case of the um, uh, client we were dealing with um, recently, they've had a nasty reaction on their finger. Um, quite a nasty bite. Um, it swelled up. It um, skin um, an area of the, of the wound putrefied a little bit. So it's not very pleasant to look at. Um, but, but that's probably more an unusual reaction than most people typically get. N uh, nevertheless, I mean, it's not nice to find a nest of 60 false widow spiders in your home. And it's something which is becoming a little bit more common, isn't it? Is there any idea how they got there? Well, there's... If you look at the, 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 the genus of the Steatoda family, because that's what these are all are part of, um, there's about six in the UK, of which five have always been here. Um, and in fact, the one that has bitten this lady, um, the Steatoda grossa, um, that is actually a native of our country. But um, there are there is one in particular which um, has a certain reputation as well, uh, and there's only the Steatoda grossa and the other one I'm about to describe, the Steatoda nobilis, that actually tend to bite. Now, the, the nobilis came into the country probably about 100 years ago, came into um, a Devon seaport, probably came from the Caribbean, and has progressively worked its way through the country. Um, we've been finding them as far north as uh, Gloucestershire. Um, I have colleagues who have found them in other parts far, far further than than that, but I imagine they've probably got there during a house move or something similar. Mm. But in, in general, they prefer warmer climes. But as the UK warms up, you'll find them moving further north. Um, I mean, not a nice thing to happen, but I, I suppose you have a way of dealing with them, do you? Are they, are they tricky to deal with? Are you sure you've got them all? Um, in this particular case, yes, I'm pretty sure I've got them all. Um, when we first came or uh, were exposed to this problem, um, it was just by way of a, a casual conversation I was having with the client, um, um, Swindon Borough Council asked us to talk to them and we said that there are some ways you can, you can self-treat this, you know, good old fly spray uh, will take care of, of a small problem um, but it, quite, it became quite obvious that this was not a small problem, that they had spread out from the initial breeding area um, they've obviously been through a few generations and now they've moved into all areas of the house with the original concentration being in the kitchen and when you're fighting that scale then you really don't want to be messing around with a small can of uh, fly killer so in this case, we've evacuated the family 
and we've uh, space treated the entire house with a fairly aggressive insecticide. And within 24 hours, we'll be very confident that any insect that was within that environment will be uh, taken care of. And you know, inspection today has shown that to be the case. And, you know, people might think of somebody who does your job and comes in with a, a boiler suit and a white mask on and, and sprays a load of insecticide over the place and then goes away. We might think that uh, that you wouldn't have this sort of academic approach to it, but you clearly you need to know a lot about all of these different types of species to know the best way to deal with them, if, if indeed they need to be dealt with. It, it, knowledge is, is power, isn't it? At the end of the day, um, you know, we're trying to be professional what we do. And you know, without learning, without knowledge, um, you can't be. So, yes, we, we, we do take a lot of time and trouble in understanding our quarry and our prey and how we best will deal with that. Um, the, the, the same spider in America is obviously a problem too. And one of the ways which pest controllers there will deal with it is quite often just to simply take down the, the webbing because the webbing actually gives it its food source and without uh, you know, being able to catch prey, they will die away naturally. So... Um, in this case, he wanted a far, uh, far shorter solution to the problem because they're internal. Mm. Um, but yes, knowledge is, is a very important thing. Uh, well, what other weird things have you been called out to in recent times? Anything else we need to worry about? Um, or the usual suspects, typically. Um, no, I, I think probably um, this is the one that is most emotive in people's um, minds and one that um, I'm certainly keeping at the top of my list because, to be quite frank, I hate spiders. <laughs> You won't be alone in that, I'm sure. I'm sure there are people listening to just starting to feel a little bit itchy while they're uh, hearing you describing what they what they were like. Um, Justin, thank you. Very good to talk to you. Nice to talk to you too, Lee. Thanks and, so much. Uh, very interesting to hear the uh, story. Justin Holloway uh, from Prokill joining us on the programme to talk about those uh, spiders that he's dealt with.